crashes, catches on fire, and murders yeah. us. Like that you scene know. from Maximum Ooh. Overdrive. And then, and, and 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 then when Alice is ready, we'll go. I'm ready. I just I just started recording, and mm. we'll see how much of like a space that gives me. All right. Um. H- hello, and welcome to. Well, scares your problem. Ooh. Ooh, it's it's Halloween. It's scary. That's right. I'm, do I, do I have my creepy drops here? I think I might do. <laughs> Just continue. Uh, yeah. Continue amongst yourself while I find them. There you go. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Um, <laughs> I'm Justin Rosniak. Brackets scary. <laughs> uh, I'm the person who's talking right now my pronouns are he and him all right go uh i am fuck i don't know malice called scoldwell killy yeah <laughs> my pronouns are she and her i'm the person who's talking now uh ooh, liam ooh, liam yes hi uh i am liam but from beyond the grave uh, i was recently murdered by our guest uh it's some sort of hh H. holmes uh murder mansion tribute thing Yes. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. You, uh, yes. I, I'm downstairs. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm the corpse, formerly known as Gareth Dennis, because nothing rhymes with or can be punned into my regular stupid name. What about <laughs> Scareth Dennis? Ooh, Scareth Dennis is funny. Yeah, yes. that's very good. Let's go with that. Yeah, then. yeah let's go with that. Yeah. Okay. Um, we're a true crime cut. Co- we're a true crime podcast today. That's right. Uh, Stay yes. sexy and don't get murdered. Um, yeah. We never um, think the police did anything wrong, even though we collect examples of them fucking everything up. Uh, um, we're, we're going to uh, we're going to make uh, money and lots of views and stuff like that off of uh, the misery of living in named persons. Yeah, we'll, we'll sell yeah. you a little mug <laughs> with like a photo of someone's dead aunt on there, and you can yeah. uh, you can buy it, and it'll be like cute, you know? Yes, exactly. We'll sell like a million of them. And um and and we'll that, call that, ourselves what's the really shitty one that I hate? Uh, oh, um, no, that's all of them. My favorite murder is the one you're yeah. thinking of. Is the one you. I was referencing. Um, Actually, it's not all of them. I think last podcast on the left is pretty good. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it it is possible to do a good true crime podcast. Yeah. It's just that this will not be it. We will you, sell you, you a you, votive you, candle of David Parker Ray. You all you have to do to do a good true crime podcast is not suck off the police that's true oh. yeah also, that's literally all you have like, to do not like wildly disrespect the victims mm-hmm. Th- those two things yes. which really kind of go hand in hand and yet it's it's a bar that's only once been surmounted yes um what you see on the screen in front of you here is a perfectly ordinary building yeah it's a two over one it it is um uh yeah, I think the whole thing was timber framed. So it's really just a, it's a it's a three over zero. Um, <laughs> Have they not finished the top floor? I believe this is after the first fire. Oh, shenanigans! Foreshadowing. Yes, foreshadowing. I do um, like this guy in in the foreground here, who has proven that from the invention of photography until today, it is perfectly normal. And responsible to see someone with a camera and stand stock still, stare down the lens and be like, what the fuck is that? What are you looking at? What are you looking at? <laughs> I don't know my no. pronouns, and neither do you. No. I like that he stood in the middle of the of the, 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 the kind of the tramway tracks. Oh, yeah, he's about to get hit by also, a tram. Also, Jacob Reese Mogg is in this photo. That's yeah. true. Yeah. Yeah. The honorable member for the 18th century. Yes. Now, you may think this is an ordinary building. Hmm. But what most people don't know is that it is actually an ordinary building. <laughs> <laughs> Scary. Spooky. Today we're going to talk about H.H. H. Holmes and his mis- uh, murder castle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the double apostrophes around castle are actually appropriate. It's not yes. a castle. It's, it's, normal. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a normal. It's a normal three-story building. <laughs> it was just a normal building. <laughs> Um, first we have to do the goddamn news. Uh, dear, uh, oh dear. Uh, the, 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 Doing the, great. 
the S and M lady was outlived by a cabbage. Uh, she was. We're, yeah. we're now on to our, our third prime minister in what, like seven weeks, something like. We put uh, out like oh, Jesus Christ. We, we put out like two episodes total during the prime ministership of Liz Truss. That's right. Yeah, Yay for us. Yeah. Liz well, Truss see- versus Lettuce. <laughs> let us one. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously, the thing is that for the period of the trust ministry, I was very busy working as a special yep. advisor. Um, but you know, I was still able to record this podcast in was... in my downtime. Um, I was unfortunately drafted by the fake news media um, <laughs> for a while. <laughs> but she didn't. She didn't get shit done at all, which is perhaps not surprising, considering she is now the shortest lived prime minister, and the guy after her in that record died in office of a heart attack. Yeah. Was it? Oh, is it heart attack? I thought it was cholera. No, I think he died of a heart attack. George Canning. Uh, oh. Although, g- given that this was in the 19th century, he could have died of like apoplexy or like Dutchman's bite or something. <laughs> <laughs> did Did she serve longer than Warren Harding? No, she no. is. She is the shortest serving by I think it's 65 days or so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was thinking Warren Harding. Days the was the President next... Warren Harding. The the guy oh, who still, died. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I was, I was, I just know that the number was like a hundred. The previous record was like one hundred nineteen. I guess my brain didn't connect you. Po- possibly, Harding, but... possibly the, the shortest serving head of state in peacetime ever. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, I 50 believe. Days. Uh, ben Harrison served. It may have been a little longer than that, like fifty five or something. So I'm sure someone in the comments knows. Uh, no, no, no. Yeah. She's actually beaten William Henry Harrison because William Henry Harrison died as a consequence of his inaugural speech because he, yes. you know, gave that was him who DC I was thinking. That's, that's, that's who I was thinking. Yeah. That's who I was thinking. With, of without too, yes. wearing a coat, yeah. he he died after thirty two days in office, which means she has like almost three weeks on him. Mm. So you know that that's that's the lesson that like that's why your mum always told you to wear a coat when you were going outside it's because yeah, of William die. Henry Harrison. Yeah. You Otherwise, you might you might break a record. You might die. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, what I thought was funny is this: the, the, uh, uh, tr- the Daily Star is a trash tabloid. Oh yeah. But this 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 was their thing they did. They set up a webcam on a lettuce and a picture of Liz Truss. What's funny is that it, like the day after she resigned, uh, they had a front page and. Um, Making fun of, or rather, being accusatory about people who were comparing her to a lettuce and saying it was trivializing. Well, it's listen, like, if, if you can't have it what? both ways, what's the point of being a British tabloid? Right, <laughs> yeah. of course. Mm-hmm. Spectacular. Yeah. And so now we have Rishi Sunak in, who's going to do austerity again. The entire country is going to collapse over the winter. Um, it's going to be absolutely barbaric. It's going to look like children of men, but less colorful. And uh, then at some point after that, Keir Starmer's going to get in and make jokes illegal. So I look forward yes. to all of that. Happening. Oh, that's going to cause problems for us. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah. Fully. Well, we're hosted in the United States. So. Yeah. To say, yeah. We're safe for right this very second. <laughs> Gareth, Gareth, there's never been a better time to overstay your visa. Yeah. <laughs> leave your wife. Only be with us. <laughs> <laughs> sort of more of a sort of a cult vibe than a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> inches away from getting a compound. Yeah, I would like a compound. Oh, now that'd be fun. I mean, uh, the thing is, right? We say things as jokes in this segment, and then they just kind of like have a way of happening. So yeah. If you have a the line on a compound, curls. yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I've been spotting a lot of real estate in my sh- various shenanigans around uh, around Philadelphia. So I, I yeah. there are a lot of empty lots that you could turn into a compound for sure. Oh, no problem. You got to get one that has rail access. You know. Yes, <laughs> the uh, the, I'm the spur surely line. one by Woodland does. Mm. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, uh, written, written, still fucked up. Bad. Yeah, still don't bad. do that. <laughs> still bad. It's gonna get worse. Other news. Uh, this is a second piece of news I I, I put in, uh, entitled "How are you so bad at this? Oh my god!" This is <laughs> this is your little like. Ukraine war updates. It, it, it's not very like wonkish or military. It's yeah. that um, essentially, like Putin has one way of shoring up domestic political support in Russia, as we saw with his you know first election, which is to blow up a shitload of apartment buildings. Now the FSB doesn't have the ability to do that anymore. The Russian Air Force has had to take over that duty, and so now right. they've managed. Oh, that, to, that's embarrassing. They've that managed to do this twice in a week. Oh my um, god. 
So did they, uh, they whack a plane into an apartment building? What happened? Twice. Uh, How do you do it twice? I get once. Once is you yeah, know fine, we, fair enough. But yeah, every, everyone, everyone fucks up once. It's the location <laughs> that's funnier about these, though, right? Oh yeah, because yeah. the, okay, so there's the one on the left here. This is in Irkutsk. They flew an Su-30 into a building. The one on right. the right is in with the beautifully silhouetted pilot coming down. Like, oh, I fucked up. Yeah, uh, like on the oh, parachute. No. Oh, no. Not, that's gone poorly. Uh, yeah, th- that, 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 everyone's <laughs> mad when this guy shows up to the party. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that that that's in Yaisk. Uh, neither of these are anywhere near the war. Yaisk is like across the Azov Sea from Ukraine. Irkutsk is way fucking further out in Siberia. Um, Isn't that in like like Lake Baikal or somewhere? Yeah, give or take. I mean, I'm, yeah. My my entire well, that's not of... that's not very good. Uh, no, and both of these were like good. both of these were training flights, which uh, culminated in this happening and them flying into apartment buildings. Well, that's um, why you, that's why you do training. If you didn't do training, this would happen it would a lot be more even often. Even worse. That's right. That's right. Um, I'm sure. So, I'm sure they're giving people real good training. All these conscripts in the uh, the Russian Air Force right now. I'm sure they have a really great training. Program. Yeah, that would be yeah, my guess fantastic too. Flying into buildings. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the guy who has to like screw the wings on. He's what really if every day were nine eleven? Brought to you by the Russian Air Force. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, the one in Irkutsk on the left here. This one only killed its pilots. They just flew into an empty house. Um, right. Oh, it it, it did manage work, to did manage to knock out power to a bunch of the city, which is very funny. Um, this the, the, one looks like it killed a whole shitload of people. Yeah, though. Oh, and it did. Uh, yeah. th- th- this has killed like 15 people and injured another 19. But hey, both pilots got out, as you see oh. here with the little the little parachute. Uh, well, training lost. That, yeah, if there's one thing we know that the Russian military is very good at killing Russians. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. the lions led by donkeys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> And so oh, they just dear. they just came down, landed, and presumably had sort of an awkward time until they that you know someone came to pick them back up again. Um, and the, the, there are so few. I mean, there are so few. The, the Russian military has just w- hammered through its uh, personnel. Oh yeah, they're going to be flying again. They they can't go. They can't yeah, be yeah, drummed yeah. out of the service. They have to get back in a plane again because they haven't got nearly enough pilots. So yeah, uh, only to nine yep. eleven another Russian apartment building. Uh, imagine you're the guy who. N- n- imagine you're the guy who nine elevens two apartment buildings. I mean, you, what, you what do you do thing, after that? You know the thing about how pilot nicknames like are usually based on like some embarrassing mistake you made or whatever. I think yeah. that's kind of like stretching the limit. Uh, of, like, they the called nicknames. me two buildings because of what I did to those people in those apartments. <laughs> 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 Yeah, I think it's kind of stretching the nicknames ability to like make you feel shame for fucking. Yeah, up at I was, that I was about point. to say. I was about to say. Yeah. I, I, they call me. They they call me. Uh, uh, Boris, women and children. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Boris <laughs> Muhammad Atta Polikarpov yeah. or whatever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Hey, good, good, yeah, yeah, it's a good allegory for the general state of uh, things oh, yeah. in Russia right now. Hundred percent. Look how bad I want it. Um, <laughs> I don't endorse the liberal blood bloodlust blood over Russian deaths, but it is really funny when they fuck up. Well, yeah, as... it's not nice to know that they are hammering their way through young Russians. That's not good. Right, like, that's bad. Really, but bad. as yeah. as Radiohead sang, "You do it to yourself. You do, and that's, that's what really hurts." <laughs> it's true. Mm. All right. That was the goddamn news. Okay. Now we're so, going to talk about this guy who looks like yeah. every sort of like marketing executive in Shoreditch in about 2015. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So this is this guy. This guy is H.H. H. Holmes. Yeah, he did right? stick and pokes in his spare time. Yeah. Uh, Real big fan of the Menzingers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> really into like mustache oils. Uh, yeah. Sailor Jerry tattoos, painted on eyebrows. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he was born as Herman Webster Mudgett. Oh, right? that's unfortunate. May sixteenth, I mean... eighteen sixty-one, in Gilmanton, New Hampshire. We do have to give him critical support for uh, blazing a trail of if your name sounds stupid, just change it. Yes. You know? We like that. We approve of that. A lesson I have not learned. <laughs> 
<laughs> Your name is good. It's fine. Yeah, you have a good name, Gareth. It's a weird combination. Oh, well, you do so. have first, two first names. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh. yeah. That's a lot better than having two last names. <laughs> oh, yeah. Fuck you, man. <laughs> Eat shit. <laughs> I get along fine with two. Thank you very much. Uh, so, <laughs> I mean, in the context of your first name is a last name. I see. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Kelly is a first name. <laughs> that is true. That's, That's true. true. Yeah, so, so you have two, two first fir- names and one two first names and one last name. Yeah, that's fine. I can just make one of them like a middle name. You know, it balances uh, out. This is yeah, perfectly acceptable. A middle name has to be something that's really weird. I think. Yeah, like oh. Alad. Hmm. You don't, you only see an Alad aside from Alad Jones. You know. So yeah, that's the, the that is How pretty. How about Alistair? I do like mm. an Alistair. For the I deep got... lore people, for the rail narrow people listening to this, because I know you're out there. Yes, you all know my middle name is Alad. Yes, very good. You can pat yourselves on the back. <laughs> Why? Okay. So, Mine's Sydney, so... but it's spelled wrong. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Our, I, our I, boy, don't, I don't have a middle name because I didn't choose one. So if oh. you if you've got a good middle name out there, you know, write in. Maybe I'll Sydney, but spelled it. wrong. <laughs> maybe like S Y D uh, N double So typically yeah. for Sydney with more Y's. Typically for men, it's or uh, it's spelled S I D N E Y, and for women, it's S Y D N E Y. Can you get? Can you guess which spelling I got? Hint: It's S Y D N E Y because my dad didn't fucking know there were two spellings. <laughs> what, that, what that's if, cool what though, because you're like named after the city. No, yeah. I'm named after my mother and her father, her grandfather. I don't know. We're just getting perilously close to answering all of our security yeah, I'm, questions. I'm just, yeah, I'm just, yeah exactly. No, my, exactly. I, my, nickname, my security questions are all Roz eats poops. Roz hey, um, eats poops. Hey, yeah. Gareth, what's your national insurance number? Uh, <laughs> oh, you, I, would, I, I almost instinctively would read it right out to you there. <laughs> yeah, Although, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure you could do nothing with... It's not like a social security number. I'm pretty sure you could do absolutely nothing with a national insurance number. Uh, yeah. Two breast augmentations for Gareth Dennis? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, what the fuck? My breast augmentations <laughs> and schedule. <laughs> what are breast augmentations? I think your tits bigger, Alice. What? what? No, I was complaining because the idea of that joke was that Gareth had stolen my breast augmentations. Oh, oh, how could he do that? No, you're stealing. I think it'd his. be funny. I think uh, it'd be funny if your you're, you're your middle name them falsely. Who do you think gave you the breasts? And I'm just like lying there, like no. <laughs> when when there were only, only one, one pair. pair <laughs> Yeah. Uh, <laughs> hi, the New York Times, or whoever's listening to us in our newfound moment of respectability. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> um, we will right. never be. We will never be decent at this. No. Let's talk about Mister Mudget here. Yeah. Let's talk yeah. About yeah. Mur- Mr. Box. Mr. Our friend Herman here. He went to the University of Michigan to uh, become that, a doctor. That does explain the psychopathy. Yeah. 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 That, yeah. That, this is true. Uh, he worked in the anatomy lab, right? Yep. It's, where he it's, it's tracking real good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> where he and his professor, Professor William James Herdman, did the normal thing you do in the anatomy lab in the 1800s. Cut you your go, up. You go rob grave some digging, graves. Right? Yeah. 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 You, gotta, you gotta find some you gotta find some cadavers. Not so many people are donating their bodies to science at this point. Right. That's, this is such a like waste of your time. If you're a, if you're at medical school in like uh, the eighteen eighties, I guess at this point, there's so much other shit you could be doing. You could be doing cocaine twenty three hours of the day. Yes. You could just be injecting unknown chemicals into yourself. And these guys, is it grave robbing? I mean, it, it, it beats phrenology, I guess. But yeah, well, yeah, that's true. I, I don't know. It sounds like it sounds like it might be fun. What, robbing a grave? Yeah, yeah, it doesn't sound like it'd be that bad, right? Yeah, you, no, because they're them. really deep, and, uh, and I don't know, I'm not so sure. And the bits fall off if it's a bit old. If I you don't get care the if the bits wrong. fall off. Yeah, Honestly, you, that's you, a turn you gotta, on for you me. you got to find a fresh one. you got to find a fresh one. The, the dirt's already still though, been... Still though, because then the heavy... Speaking of a fresh one, hey, hey, what's the, what have a necrophiliac and an alcoholic got in common? Uh, both enjoy cracking open a cold one. Yeah. On, you, can't, oh. you can't sneak that one past me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, the dirt's already like broken up for you. You just, uh, you know, you, you, you dig a lazy six foot deep hole. You take the coffin out, <laughs> grab the body, put it back in. That the the guy's I mean, already broke. marks, but for corpse robbing, yeah. sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. The guy, <laughs> the guy's already did the hard part for you. 
like the grave like, diggers. <laughs> but like people are pretty like ungainly to carry, right? Like any and yeah. any yeah, like you, EMT you, or that's, a, that's a two matter. Uh, I assume I assume you got a couple guys with you on the grave Go robbing live, detail. Dickhead. Yeah. <laughs> He's like fully <laughs> dead, just cannot, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, speaking of dickheads, go Phil. Um yeah. hmm. so so he is um, you know, this is this is your standard sort of sociopath guy, you know, he's a serial liar, he's a philanderer, he's a manipulator, he normal sociopathic shit. He's good yeah, he's at, a doctor. You know, he's yeah. a doctor, yeah, exactly. Um so does he graduate medical school? Yes. Great. Oh, and, he, I, I, and he looks exactly like this. I didn't actually put this in as a resemblance. I was looking for an image for scams. But if you go back <laughs> and forth, quite good, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can really see the resemblance here. This is true. Um, so he had some sort of early grifts and swindles he was into, right? Incredible. Um, Love a swindle. You know, yeah, yeah, a nice swindle. Um, now, grave robbing and subsequent human dissection are fun, right? They don't pay the bills, though, I would think. <laughs> yeah, but listen, there... do what you love. You'll never work a day in your life. You yeah. say that, but you've never tried to make a ro- uh, living as a, as a grave robber. <laughs> That's true. I haven't. <laughs> well, during this process, Holmes finds his real passion, which is insurance fraud. Oh, who can blame him? Oh, it's a victimless crime. <laughs> <laughs> Well, back at, back in the day, like people were just giving out insurance just for whatever, right? You could have a tontine at this point, so it must have been so much easier. Yes, so the scam was pretty simple. You take out a life insurance policy, you go rob a grave, and you make the body look like it was in a tragic accident. Then you claim the benefits of the life insurance policy, rinse and repeat. Right, you, you don't have to like do any like ID checks to take out a life insurance policy on someone else either. So no one's going to ask questions that this one guy with his mustache just keeps coming back around. To, yeah, you like, got to not worry about that. <laughs> I like the idea that they've got five. Just they've only got five cadavers, and they kind of have them all in a shed, and they're kind of getting slowly more battered and bruised as they've staged <laughs> more and more sort of crashes, and they have to like. Tidy them up, and like one of them's got an arm off, and they're kind of like, oh, I know. <laughs> these are getting really bashed up. Yeah, I'm gonna, like gonna have to go get another one. Yeah. This, this this guy, Doctor Mudger, he's so unlucky. Like he's had like six aunts die of explosions. Can it's you terrible. believe that? <laughs> <laughs> he did this several times in college, but he left it behind after graduation. Instead, uh, tried y- to useful take useful indiscretion. I know, know, right? Yeah. <laughs> We've all we've all done things in we've college all, that we, we kind of cringed oh, during. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> let's not do that. Let's not have this discussion. <laughs> Liam, did you rob a grave? Uh, Alice, robbing a grave would be considered ethical uh, compared to some of the shit I did in college. Instead, <laughs> <laughs> he decided, fine, which is fine. Don't worry about me. Worry about yourselves. Mm-hmm. He decided to uh, take a respectable day job after college, right? Hmm. Um, that's brief- Mr. Grave Robert to you. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, so quite he brief- literally, he's like, I didn't spend seven years at uh, grave robbing medical school to be called Mr. Grave Robber. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do they call the guy who robbed the fewest grades who graduated medical school? <laughs> Doctor. Doctor. <laughs> Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> so he briefly worked at the Norristown State Hospital in Pennsylvania. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> And but he didn't like that job. He started working at a uh, drug he was store. In fucking Norristown, probably. Sucks. <laughs> then then he worked in a drug store in Philly. What's the drug store need a doctor for? Like you could just I, fucking give out anything if you're a pharmacist at that point. I I guess uh, I guess he the uh, the store sent out a bad prescription, uh, which killed a kid, and then although H H Holmes claimed not to be involved, he fled the city for Chicago. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he, I, I did read a bit about his early life, and it contains the phrase "left town" a lot. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, yes, frequently, frequently going somewhere else. But I believe this is the first time he actually changed his name. He became, he, he went from, uh, what's his face, Mudge, uh, Mudge. Mudge. Yeah, he became Henry Howard Holmes. Mm. Right, man, you could just get away with every crime. I mean, you could still get away with every crime if you're white. But like, <laughs> and he was white and a doctor, yeah. and like there was yeah. basically no cops yet. How right. the fuck 
Did he ever get caught for anything? Especially at a time when pharmacists were just dispensing anything. Gelignite, cocaine, heroin, strychnine, inventing Pepsi. I mean... It... <laughs> Nitroglycerin. Yeah, yeah fully. Yeah. Like one glass jar full of nitroglycerin tablets, please. Yeah. Yum yum. Delicious. <laughs> and a bag of gelignite for my wife. Pemberton, yeah. you <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> Holmes took a job at a drugstore near 63rd and Housestead uh, streets in uh, Englewood, Chicago, right? Mm. Um, and after a fairly short period of time, he bought the store and also a vacant lot across the street from the store. A lot of people this is, say, is this the point where we get to the thing where it's like with some with some help from his parents and we'll go, ah, oh, uh, of course. Say yeah. the line, Bert. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know what? I actually have no idea. Um, Could have been especially crimes. Since he, Could have well, been insurance I, he, frauds. You gotta remember he's doing crimes this whole time, mostly insurance fraud and other kinds of fraud. Um I'm not <laughs> sensing huge amounts of competence from this guy though. So is he competent enough to have money with it i suppose he could have it in like an old-timey suitcase that he, that, that's like he drags around and just a few dollars sort of fly out the back yeah, of it sort of that's a sort of a sort of a music man type situation yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. <laughs> um i don't know where he gets the money from to be honest i know he, he buys the store legitimately uh a lot of people say oh he murdered the owners no they outlived um uh homes by like a couple decades uh, the most <laughs> devious yeah. murder plot of yeah, all yeah. the most yeah. devious murder plot of all the one where you don't murder the people slow burn, slow burn impossible baby. to catch you yeah. <laughs> it takes a lot of patience but eventually they will die it takes and... a village to kill to, to kill a child <laughs> this is my plan to murder henry kissinger and you know it's not working so far but i'm keeping the faith hh mm -hmm. <laughs> henry kissinger even in this stuff H.H. <laughs> uh, Holmes had some big plans, right? He was going to build a bigger store with apartments on top. I mean, you love. He's going to build a five over one. Of uh -huh. of such things are the Coca Cola Corporation built yeah. of, you know, like yes. uh, enterprising pharmacists. Yes. Um. All right. So it was finished in 1887, and the contractor sued him for non-payment in 1888. Deals are my art form. I uh, this guy does some deals. <laughs> this guy loves some deals. Ah, uh, <laughs> Mr. Musk. Yeah. You made it. They call me Dr. Deals. Yes. Um, now after the building is finished, Holmes finally gets down to the hard work of murdering people. Oh, there he okay. goes. Yes. After, after a while, you have to like generate your own corpses to grave rob, I guess. This is true. true. Yeah, what was his true. plan with the murdering? Was he just did he just decide he needed the corpses or was he just fancying it? I'm pretty sure he just <laughs> murdered people when murdered it was convenient treats. for him to murder people. Uh, mm. um, so uh, the first murder, um and so I, I I drew a lot from historian Adam Seltzer, who uh wrote a book uh, about H. H. Holmes uh, about five years ago which I don't have the name of on this slide, but I do on the next slide, because um, uh, he's sort of debunked a lot of the uh, the sensationalism around H.H. H. Holmes. H.H. Uh, um, H. H. Holmes, the true history of the white city devil. Yes. Um, lots of details are sketchy, of course, because he was grifting everyone constantly. But the first likely murder was uh, Julius Smythe, and wow. Julia Smythe was the wife of a man named Ned Connor, who worked in Holmes's pharmacy, and then rented an apartment above the pharmacy from H.H. H. H. Holmes. Fucking landlords. Yeah. Um, yeah. What if your landlord was your boss? What and also are killed good your for? wife. Yeah. Absolutely but, nothing. All yeah, I was Ned Flanders' voice in my head, but I, I can't. Don't do quite that. Do it. I can't so, quite do it. How many so, have you killed Maud Flanders? Yeah, exactly. With so, a t-shirt cannon. Holmes was not content to simply claw back the wages from Ned. He he had an affair with Ned's wife. Oh, oh piece of <laughs> shit. Yeah, he was he was yeah. like a serial bigamist, wasn't he? Because every time yes. he would like he would marry a woman. And then, like, leave town on account of his many crimes, change his name, marry another woman, rinse and yes. repeat. Yeah, he did that, I think, about four times. Um, <laughs> I'm not 
blaming the victims here. But yeah. but if, if a mysterious drifter with no past wanders into town, I cannot emphasize enough, do not marry that stranger. It's the 1890s. Everyone's a stranger. Oh, that's yeah, a good that's point. everyone, good everyone. Point. Yeah, I, I got 2022 everyone. brain. Yeah, yeah that's true. <laughs> I but it's good say, advice. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Gareth. Do not have an affair with your husband's boss landlord. and landlord. No. No. Don't do unless, that. Unless <laughs> you're doing that thing that that woman did with members of the SS where she slept with them and then <laughs> shot them to death in fields. Oh, you can do that. Different context. Very different context. Yeah, but it's it's what we call a like a relationship power dynamic fucking uh, this problematic. Is the, this is the yeah. opposite of relationship uh, anarchism. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. This is Une- it's unethical non monogamy. In fact, it's yeah. anti ethical non monogamy. Yes. So that's trash. Yeah. yeah. So Holmes, Holmes, <laughs> had it. Gareth, he's a murderer. Like <laughs> not the <a> cool kind. <laughs> So Holmes had an affair with Julia, and Ned was, of course, completely fed up at this point. It's like my boss and my landlord and my wife. If we if we, if we go back a slide to just look at this dude, yeah. what what was the dick situation here that he was able to get <laughs> married Thunderous. to all of the- <laughs> Thunderous. I mean, <laughs> like a tube of tennis balls hanging there. <laughs> just truly, truly unremarkable. My guy to look was at. slanging dog. Can't can't have been charming. Like he probably smells of graves. He has to keep leaving town. He's a he doctor. probably killed a. Ch- That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll have a lot of mud under his fingernails. Mm, He's a doctor. I, probably, I bet yeah. his fingernails are a a. Yeah, some people like to play in the dirt. And what Gross. we're gonna do is, it's fine. It's fine. We're not a dirt shaming podcast. That's not even the. T- that's not <laughs> I, even I top ten. The grossest shaming. shit I've said on this podcast. <laughs> Fantastic. I have said some truly disgusting things. Now, what I'm saying is, lube is your friend. And mm. back to what you were saying, Ross. <laughs> so, thank you, Gareth. Ned. Ned was pretty fed up about this, and. He about just the, left. About his landlord fucking his wife? Yeah. His landlord and his boss <laughs> fucking his wife? Yeah. Yeah, he'd be pretty, he'd be pretty yeah. fed up. Just yeah. like coming pretty... into work, kind of awkward, you know? Um, And so this is, uh, the motive here is unclear, because Julia stayed behind. And oh, so did her. Did. So did her yeah. six-year-old daughter. Uh-oh. Um, and oh. neither of them were seen after Christmas Eve, 1891. Oh, check oh. out six-year-old. Yeah, he just he just gets like bored, I guess. Now that it's not forbidden fruit anymore. What do you mean she calls me dad and yeah. slits her throat? <laughs> yeah. Well, Holmes later claimed this was uh 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 she was killed as part of a a, a botched abortion he performed. Gee, okay. <laughs> oh, and the six year old as well. Uh, That's apparently. a really yeah, botched right, abortion. Right, yeah. <laughs> this yeah. is this what, is, he is a theme. A I'm not Re- buying her a me. present. Executor, Remi- <laughs> reminding me here of the uh, the surgery with the three hundred percent mortality rate, yeah. um, which it, which is the guy's amputating a limb. He like amputates the guy's limb. Guy dies. Uh, he nicks the assistant with a saw. Uh, assistant gets tetanus. Dies. Guy watching in the operating theater gallery falls, hits his head, dies. <laughs> Medicine, I mean, we shouldn't laugh, but it's pretty funny. Statistically, that's pretty fucking so cool. impressive. Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, hundred percent. You get like a kill streak. You get like a UAV if you do that a couple of times. Yeah, you get a funny little up up ping noise uh, in, in the uh, yeah in your heads up. Yeah, that's it. He has a couple. He has, uh, I think, at least one more murder in the uh, original format. Murder Castle. The two the story original building. format. Play yeah. you play the hits. Yeah, M- Murder Castle, uh, the original series. Yeah. Murder Castle, the next generation. Yes. I, th- I mean, this we need. To, I, I'm dwelling on the home. Holmes claiming that these deaths were as, as a result of botched abortions. He's claiming that the six year old died as a result of a botched abortion. So uh, he's really telling on himself late there term. in the yeah, most yeah, horrific yeah. way. Uh, That's bad. He also killed. Uh, may have killed Emmeline Sagrande. Uh, also claimed that was a botched abortion. You gotta what, stop what, doing it, man. What, what, yeah. what trimester is six years old, by the way? I was about to say, <laughs> uh, <or> so? yeah, <laughs> yeah, 18th <laughs> trimester, yeah. yeah. Well, this is a theme. When he kills someone, he also kills their kids. For basically Why? no reason. <laughs> Just to be thorough, I guess? That's kind of fucked guess, up. Yeah. <laughs> but Holmes had bigger ideas than murdering people, right? He wanted oh, to make boy. some money. He's in Chicago, and Chicago has sec- secured the 1893 World's Columbian Exhibition. Huh. You can read a big Thomas Pynchon novel about this yeah. if you want to. As, uh, as uh, Louis Sullivan said, 
The damage wrought by the World's Fair will last for half a century from its date, if not longer. It has penetrated deep into the constitution of the American mind, affecting their lesions significant of dementia. <laughs> All right, dude, fucking take a breath. Would have no. been a great poster back in the dude, day. Louis Sullivan would, would have some good posts. Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, it, the, the World's Columbian Exhibition, this was 400 years since Columbus discovered America and then murdered everyone there. Um, it's going to be held in Chicago, South Chicago, Jackson Park, not far from Englewood. Hordes of tourists from around the world would be there to gawk at all the big, dumb, white plaster buildings. It's going to be sort of this bazaar model city, a bunch of big name designers. They got Daniel Burnham, John Wilburn Root, Frederick Law Olmsted. Charles Atwood and so on and so it's forth. It's very, very funny to imagine when you say big name designers, this being sort of like a sort of K-pop level of fame. There's like teenage <laughs> yeah, girls yeah, like yeah. screaming for yeah, Frederick Law Olmsted. Sc- Frederick Law Yeah, just women yeah. screaming so hard that they faint because uh, they're so <laughs> excited to see these guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny. They let Lewis Sullivan uh, design the transportation building and in reaction to uh, the, the entire white city theme, uh, used a total of 44 colors on the building. Good for him. Good for him. That's. I I regret that color photography was not really in the state that it should have been. For I was about to say that you, there would have been some good pictures of that thing. Um. So about twenty seven million people attended the exhibition during a six months run. This was the first World's Fair that made money and one of the last. Um. <laughs> These people needed to be accommodated somewhere, so Holmes had an idea. Why don't we put another floor on the building for a hotel, right? I mean, so like most ethical Airbnb owner? Yes. Oof. Not wrong, though. Now, this floor was not necessarily to actually use as a hotel, but to fleece investors and contractors, right? Most ethical Airbnb owner? Yeah. So this results in a final form of the quote-unquote murder castle. Um, so we saw this slide earlier. Um, the murder castle. There's lots of things which are rumored about it. Does it have over 100 rooms? Do you think you can fit 100 rooms in that? No. Uh, no. no. Really small well, ones. Quite a lot of floors. Yeah, yeah closets. Th- th- many th- closets. Yeah, a, a bunch of sort of phone booth sized rooms. Yeah. <laughs> Behold my murder. If you'll just hold still, it's just 100 suicide booths from Futurama. Well, like that, the the, yeah. the idea of this murder castle, right, is that you enter into it under false pretenses. And then H.H. H. Holmes pops up and he's like, nah, you have entered into my complex web of traps, right? Yeah, like that's a Saw movie. Yeah, like, right. like a Saw movie, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's what's meant to be happening here, right? And the, the rest of the street is like unaware. So there's, there's also um, pipes to gas people on the press of a button, soundproof rooms, a kiln to uh, cremate corpses. That was also not in the building. Uh... I mean, was technically, it... <laughs> any pipe can be a pipe to gas people on the press of a button, so long as you have the right button, you know? Uh, the other thing is it's maze-like, with trap doors and secret passages and stairways to nowhere. No, that also, that also wasn't true. Is the, has uh, has, has, anyone, to... has well, anyone ever built a fucking maze-like trap door secret passage stairway to nowhere house? Now that i found out that the fucking Winchester Mystery House is also largely a myth, I'm but getting more and more, and more. I'm uh, getting more and more yes. annoyed. Yes. Uh, Scottish baronial castles. Honestly, that shit is amazing. They really <laughs> did build all the crazy secret like paintings that slid to one side and little passageways. Ooh. They were all fucking paranoid as fuck. It's good stuff. Go gotta, to I... Crathis Castle or uh, Huntley. They're they're good fun. Love to love to live in one of those. I I just need to save up about the same deposit as for like a studio flat in zone two. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, there were shoots and a dumbwaiter, but that was a normal thing in a building like this, you know, for yep. moving moving stuff up and moving trash down. Uh, but it did not go to a killing floor or a torture chamber. Oh, also, that's just, the ground floor. J- just imagine yeah. putting a full size, like an adult body, in a dumbwaiter. Like oh it's meant God. to hold like two trays max, and you're yeah. fucking squishing it in there. Did he not learn from his grave Get digging how in. hard it is God to move a body? Damn it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there's there's two stages of construction on this. He builds the storefront and the first floor first, and then to capitalize on the Columbian exhibition, he builds the third floor, 
because the second floor is apartments. The third floor is going to be the hotel. Hmm. Um, Looks pretty crummy for a hotel, to be honest. But there we are. The hotel was only ever partially completed. Um, inspectors came and looked at the building, and their foot went through the floor, a brand new floor in multiple locations. Um, oh, dear. That thing was uh, the- that 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 was that floor was never completed. <laughs> the idea that it was like inspected as well also kind of puts the lie to the yeah. saw like complex maze of traps. Just um yeah, just just the idea that like um, we'll just go fuck ourselves, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> just the idea that like a guy in this sort of eighteen nineties equivalent of a high vis like shows up with a clipboard okay. and looks around. What, what happened? Well what happened? What happened, Roz? So, so this is uh this is largely a very ordinary mixed use building of its time. There mm. were a couple secret rooms in there, but those were used for storing uh, furniture that H.H. Holmes brought on credit and didn't want repossessed. Dude's uh, right. Yeah, we, who, who amongst us, you know? This is true. <laughs> this is true. He, just, he just loves fraud. He loves to do fraud. <laughs> He has a fixation with defrauding people. Like he's juggling, he's plate spinning oh. so many crimes. <laughs> he's doing so What's many crimes doing? constantly. It's great. Oh my God. Yeah. It's it's very funny to be like there actually is like a complex web yeah, of man. traps, but like yeah. four furniture. I like the, spinny, I like yeah. the idea of spinny plate crimes. It's a con- <laughs> complex web of traps, but only for creditors. <laughs> <laughs> Leave me alone, goddammit. <laughs> if this guy didn't Which, do so enough. many murders. He would be the greatest guy. <laughs> He'd be yeah. a national hero. Uh. Yeah. So, how do we know this building was ordinary? Alice, you still with us? Yeah, it's Alice. I'm yeah, Alice. Can can, yeah. can neither of you hear me? I can hear you. Oh. I can't. This is Let me just refresh again. Oh, it's happened again. Oh. <sighs> Incredible. Do you want me to reload? I have my local going. Hello? Right. How about now? How about now? Yes, oh, yes, 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 right, yes. Alice is back. All right, All right. Heretic, Jesus, calm down. Yeah. Oh, we so missed you, Alice. Yeah, yeah. We love you so much. Aww. How do we know the building was ordinary? Uh, the answer is. Like... Oh wait, no. Let's spec. Let's do some speculation first. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do some speculation. Because a guy in an eighteen nineties high vis went around it and didn't find any like sacks full of corpses or whatever. Yes, that is part of it. Also, competence is not a word I would use to describe this Joker. I do not think he has the wherewithal to even assemble one trapdoor, let alone be yeah, yeah, C minus murder at in best. a time before yeah. like YouTube tutorials or like DIY yeah. books. You're not building yeah. your own trapdoor. Also, as we've learned from like Jeffrey Dahmer or uh, Ted Bundy or any number of other serial killers, it's quite difficult to kill people unobtrusively, particularly when you're living like in an urban environment because people fucking smell bad when we yes. die. And yep. like you gotta get rid of all of the stuff that a person is or used to be. And that takes a lot of like garbage bags and shit like that. And eventually someone's gonna see you coming out of your creepy murder hotel with a trash bag with an arm sticking out of it, and then they're gonna call the fucking eighteen nineties cops who are gonna chase you with truncheons. Yeah, if they see you herding pigs in and out the back door repeatedly, they're going to be, they're going to be <laughs> confused. Chicago and brick top there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the other thing is, I don't think the tradespeople would be in the building long enough for, without him murdering them. We've mm. already worked out yeah. he's got a fix. I don't think tradespeople could be in there long enough to build these trapdoors. Insatiable yeah. appetite for murder, like sort of ruins his ability to like do longer term planned murders. <laughs> Main reason we can tell. The building was fairly er- ordinary. Is that um, there was a big legal battle over non-payment from the contractors because <laughs> he loved the scams. He loved yeah. them, and there, so so all the plans shoot, for shoot, the building man. live by the gun, die by the gun. <laughs> all the plans for the the building were on file in the Chicago archives, and no one bothered looking for them until uh. again we mentioned Adam Seltzer. Uh, he dug them up in 2016. Wait, Adam. <laughs> Wait, are, are you saying that we had fucking as built of the murder house? Yes. And this, and, and this never like came no one up. Bo- no one bothered well, looking at it. Until him. the inventor of Seltzer fucking. Yes. Adam <laughs> Seltzer. Adam Seltzer, yeah. yeah. As built for this, but not for. Oh my God, so many other things. Jesus. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Hi, it's Justin. 
Uh, so this is a commercial for the podcast that you're already listening to. Uh, people are annoyed by these, so let me get to the point. We have this thing called Patreon, right? The deal is you give us two bucks a month, and we give you an extra episode once a month. Uh, sometimes it's a little inconsistent, but, you know, it's two bucks. You get what you pay for. Um, it also gets you our full back catalog of bonus episodes, so you can learn about exciting topics like guns, pickup trucks, or pickup trucks with guns on them. The money we raise through Patreon goes to making sure that the only ad you hear on this podcast is this one. Anyway, that's something to consider if you have two bucks to spare each month. Uh, join at patreon.com forward slash WTYP pod. Do it if you want. Or don't. It's your decision, and we respect that. Back to the show. So, around this time, Holmes meets and befriends a man named Benjamin Pitazel. Yeah, I was, I was, I was not sure about this pr- pronunciation either. Was, I, I wasn't sure if it was Pizzel or Pizzel or whatever the dumbest, whatever the dumbest one is. That's so Pizzel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 could be Pizzel. Yeah, he's a he's a carpenter, and he assists them in the construction of this building, and also in defrauding people. Oh, right, he's the guy who knows how to build the trapdoors, but the trapdoors yeah. are like storing hidden furniture that he wasn't going to yeah. pay off. Yes, so exactly. He's, <laughs> he's the guy to the bullshit top floor that we can see in the picture. Yeah. Well, this is again after the first fire. Um, so the cornice fell off, and apparently there was a shitty temporary roof back here. Um, now, H. 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 Holmes was pretty well known in the community for constantly being sued and visited by the police and so on and so forth. He's this sort of neighborhood character. Oh, so it, so, this... so when the cops find all of the bodies, they're not going to be like, he kept himself to himself. I never would have mm-hmm. suspected. Uh, it's yeah, he's, more he's of a, a, oh, that guy situation. Uh, oh, yeah, that guy. Yeah, he's a man about town. This is, the community uh, didn't notice all the people disappearing, but they did notice this. Oh, oh, oh this guy. Oh, he's yeah, fun. Oh, 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 he's a funny guy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, J- Jimmy Savile for fucking uh, 70 yeah. years. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, this is, this is, uh, this is Benjamin Pitazel up here. This guy. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, so anyway. <laughs> Minnie Williams moved to Chicago in 1893, found Holmes in an employment office. Holmes offered her a job as a stenographer, but then learned that she owned land in Fort Worth, Texas, right? What, what are you what are you stenographing in a in a pharmacy? Like uh pass. Yeah. Yeah. Also, what does he want with land in Fort Worth, Texas? Is he going to build another murder house? Just franchise the murder house? Yeah, Spoilers. The franchising. Yeah. <laughs> Spoilers. Oh. 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 <laughs> Shit. I, 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 I hate to be the Ray Croc of murder houses. <laughs> Do you? Yeah. It's too industrialized. It loses its soul, you know? I believe they had some sort of affair, and Holmes convinced her to sign the deed to that property over to Alexander Bond, which was an alias of. Yes. <laughs> It was an alias of Holmes. Holmes Bond. Wait a minute. What's yeah. going on here? Mm. He did. He did name himself after Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. Oh God, yeah. he did because that's contemporaneous. He literally. Oh my. Yeah. What a prick. God, yeah. this <laughs> fucking <laughs> asshole. <laughs> I just put that together just now when you said that. That's so yeah. fucking annoying. So, no, so we got I'm this. Like, okay. I'm right. just like the most fucking Napoleon of crime. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> They were they were doing whatever they were doing. Uh, Williams and Holmes rented an apartment, uh, and once Williams' sister Annie came to visit, neither of them were seen ever again. Okay, yeah. so 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 between this and the like, woman with the six year old kid, I'm now in 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 envisioning envisioning envisioning. I'm in, I'm envisioning. Mm. Uh, well, <laughs> more, more every day. That's uh, that's I, the female version. That's right. I, I'm <laughs> yeah. I'm envisioning. A sort of like King of Queens situation, but the first sort of like 
quotidian laugh track family annoyance thing, he murders everyone else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, the, the kid's like, hey, can you teach me to shave? He's like, murder. Oh, my sister's coming to town. Murder. My parents are coming to town. Murder. Lost my keys. Murder. And so on. <laughs> There's around uh, six other people close to Holmes that disappeared without a trace while the quote-unquote murder castle was operating. Whether the murder castle was actually involved is unclear. Mm. Uh, um, murder castle involved murdering. Yeah. Oh, that's some New York Times prose. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, in late 1893, the, castle's, the murder castle's unfinished third floor burnt down. Um... He tried to collect the insurance money, and the insurance company was like, "No, that was arson." It's it, you it, did it's you did you that again. <laughs> the, the was most that, guy <laughs> was that him burning all the bodies? So they'd be in the attic at that point. Hmm. Could just have that's been my, shitty construction. That's my theory. This is a true crime podcast, after all. I'm yeah, going to do true, yeah, wild that's a speculation. Point. True yeah, crime. Wild yeah, let's do some speculation. Wild. Let's do some wild speculation. Yeah, I do, I do think uh, it's really funny that the insurance company, the insurance fraud, catches up with him at the one point where he, he has actually suffered like a material loss, even if he did it to himself. <laughs> like everything else, he's just been borrowing dead people. The first thing that actually like puts him out of pocket, and they go, "Wait a second, <laughs> I recognize you." In tr in, we're a true crime podcast, so I think we can all agree that uh, a lot of respect there for the police and for yes. the insurance company. Yes. You know, the, the, thin, the thin, the thin doing, blue line. Doing due, di due, gil due, due diligence. diligence. Due yeah, diligence. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's his next murder. He killed <laughs> diligence. He got her. So now he's on the run from the insurance company. So Holmes left his murder castle for greener pastures. We left it behind. Oh. Yeah. Fort Worth, Texas. Oh. Where franchises the murder castle. Yeah. Is he it? started to put up another building. <laughs> With was, with Ben with with his friend Ben Petersel, right? Who followed him down yeah. there? Yeah, Th this one, you know, because we also have to talk about how insanely easy it was to disappear and never be found at that time. You could just mm -hmm. like move one state, mm -hmm. and then just be like, "Yeah, I'm actually Doctor Moriarty now," and <laughs> no one would know. He didn't even change his name. Oh fuck me. <laughs> This guy's a lazy. He's lazy. He is. You know, that's the thread. Forget the murders. The thread that I'm seeing running right the way through his career is laziness. Just not good enough. The the, the press in Fort Worth even was even was all over him. He was like, oh yeah, he had a murder castle up there. He's gonna have a murder castle down here anyway. <laughs> uh, which is, or or that was that was a couple years uh, after this. But anyway, um, so he goes down to Fort Worth. He puts up another building. Right. The thing is, the people of Texas, the good upstanding people of Texas, uh, would not tolerate a man not paying the contractors. Uh, <laughs> so, so it was sold out from under him at auction in 1894. Uh, and Holmes turned to a new business, which was stealing horses in Fort Worth and selling them in St. Louis. <laughs> <laughs> Inspired. Not necessarily just the horses. I believe he was imprisoned for selling st selling stolen goods in St. Louis. Not the horses, though. Um, but the thing is, his re reputation was now besmirched by an actual conviction. So he starts to formulate a plan, right? He's going to fake his own death, collect yeah, the insurance money. Shit. He's going to collect the insurance money and start a new life. And in jail, he meets the outlaw... Marion Hedgepeth, uh -oh. also known as the Handsome Bandit. Uh, so they call me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, and and uh, Hedgepeth uh, gives him the contact details of a lawyer who he thought would be amicable to the plan, right? This lawyer is Jephthah Howie, right? And after he's bailed out of jail, he enacted the plan. He faked his own death. And the insurance company didn't pay out. No. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Why not? But undeterred, Holmes, now deceased, talked to his friend Piazzo. What if the scheme was reversed? 
Uh-oh. A fake piezel stamp. Oh, I don't feel good about Ben right now. Yeah. Yeah, Ben's Ben's going to have some issues. <laughs> So I want to have, uh, there's a word here on faking your own death, right? Very risky business to do alone. Also risky with a friend. Um, but when your friend wants you to fake your own death, all kinds of things can go wrong, right? You probably should structure it in such a way that you don't actually get killed. And there's some consequences for your friend if they go and fa- go ahead and kill you in the process. Right, yes. and uh, Peter Zell did not set up these safeguards. Did we lose people? Oh, I'm still here. Okay, I'm just waiting on Alice to rejoin us. Oh my god! Oh, and I'm back. All right, Yay. incredible. We were we were waiting. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Don't be. Uh, it wasn't long. All right. I'm going to go back into my uh, spiel here. Faking your own death, right? Yeah. Risky business to do alone. Also risky with a friend. Very, <laughs> very true. risky when that friend is asking you to fake your own death. And then you're splitting the insurance money. Right? Yeah. You, you Generally, want, you want some kind of a safeguard there. You want some safeguard there that, you know, your friend doesn't just straight up kill you. Mm. Right, yeah. You want some, maybe some consequences there. You want a better safeguard than my friend is a nice guy who won't (laughs) do that to me because he isn't. He he probably will. will. He probably will. Yeah. Also, do do you like the the image of like people who have tried to fake their deaths that I put up here? I've got um, I've got Tupac. I've got Elvis. I've got John Stonehouse. Uh, John Darwin, the canoe guy. Oh, I was uh, loving John Darwin. I was so glad John Darwin is on here. I, I oh very God. very fond of memories of like that particular news story, and of course Radovan Karadzic, the uh, president of the Republic of Serbska, yes. who uh, Fuck that guy. It, while he was on the run for war crimes, disguised himself as a sex therapist and uh, grew a massive <laughs> beard. Incredible. So Peter Zelt did not set up these safeguards. He's a trusting man for a sort of very, repeated very, fraudster yeah, and murderer. Yeah. <laughs> Peter Zell and Holmes would go to Philadelphia. Peter Zell would set himself up as an inventor named B.F. Perry. <laughs> oh, boy. Working in some kind of storefront lab- laboratory, right? Just a normal thing that you could do back then. Yeah, that was like a normal thing to do. Like, loads of people were inventors. It's uh, like the that's how they in- podcasting at that point. That's how they invented so many things back then. Oh, that's why we don't <laughs> do that now. Yeah. <laughs> um... They would swap in a cadaver and then blow up the lab so badly the body couldn't be identified. Oh, that's oh, right. oh they have to dust off one of their last three plan. corpses from the insurance fraud. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah they got to <laughs> go play find the hits. <laughs> How do they never is... get caught grave robbing, by the way? Because they do so much of it. <laughs> yes. And no one gives a shit. <sighs> they just it's have like, like I, a I... dead guy wrapped up in a carpet or something. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. The dead tell no tales. Mm. I mean, <laughs> yeah, but when you've got eighty or ninety of them on a list, that starts. You got like you know, a whole. You pull the train up to the graveyard, and you're just like, <laughs> just <laughs> dumping corpses on a flat car and putting a tarp over them. <laughs> <laughs> Peter Zell's wife would collect the payout and split it fifty fifty, right? How much does your wife like you, man? Because that's going to oh, be a much. really sort of like yeah. determining factor here. Yeah. How much does she like you relative to the guy who, as we've established, had the sort of monster dick game? Yes, the uh, yes. world's largest penis. Slang and wood, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Holmes apparently decided to skip the cadaver part and oh. simply knocked out Petazel with chloroform oh. and then blew up the lab. Oh, oh wow. I, yeah. I, again, see, like the ready availability of weird chemicals just makes for a sort of a wackier crime. Like you could just get chloroform whenever, and they didn't know it was carcinogenic. And if they did know, they wouldn't have cared. And so oh, they're just like, worse than that. He burned the body with benzene. Oh, just pure benzene. <laughs> <laughs> Tasty. <laughs> Why are my teeth falling out? Mm. Don't worry so about that. Saves weight. Yeah, yeah saves weight. <laughs> so. Um, 
Now, somehow throughout this, Peter Zell's wife is not aware that that Peter Zell is dead. Bullshit. Right? She that knew. this is part part of the uh this is part of the scam, right? She had to have known. Like he comes out of the like burning building, less her husband, and she's like, Okay, I have no questions here. Yeah, no questions they were definitely here. uh getting it on. Mm. Yeah. Well, well, he convinces Peter Zell's wife to give him custody of three of her five kids. Jesus fuck! What? Why? <laughs> I don't know. This is unclear <laughs> to me. <laughs> what? This guy had no. Oh my god! Either he was playing three D chess, or more likely, he had no idea what was going on. And was just reaching <laughs> at any given moment for yeah. the nearest possible yeah. thing he could. So like heavily fucked up on benzene fumes. Like. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. I need your kids. Yeah. <laughs> I need your kids <laughs> right now. Yeah. Yeah. A flee to Michigan and then to Ontario. Uh and and he gets back into his old bad habit and he kills the kids. Oh Jesus. <laughs> yeah, there's bad habit and he there's kills like the kids. one slice yeah. of life thing happens, and he's like, right, back to the knives. <laughs> oh my god, this guy. <laughs> How is he killing these people, by the way? Do we know? Like, what's his vi- believe, what's his vibe? What's his deal? I believe two of the kids he uh, suffocated in a box in Toronto. Jesus, and the other one was some kind of something else in Indianapolis. Mm. Maybe just oh, exposure to Indianapolis. <laughs> 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 oh my god! Now, in the meantime, our friend Marion Hedgepath, the handsome bandit, he's pretty mad. He. Oh, I miss I misgendered Marion. <laughs> I had got. Well, you gotta have your pronouns. You gotta have a yeah. little like sheriff style oh, badge with your pronouns. You know? I I lose yeah. a lot of points there. That's bad. <laughs> oh, so Marion Marion Hedgepath was promised a commission for recommending the lawyer. He never got it. I'm amazed that he wasn't killed though. I'm amazed that when he recommended the lawyer, it wasn't as Alice said, and he got immediately knocked off. He, he just like, like no. keeps dodging the like chloroformed rag. You know, he keeps like turning around <laughs> slightly <laughs> too fast. Ninja tricks, ninja tricks, ah, smoke bomb. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, he was yeah. Uh, he was in jail, and people liked him. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So he told Save the police the <laughs> he did. He didn't get his uh, commission. He told the police about the plant fraud, and investigators in Philadelphia got word of it. Oh boy, I'm, I'm I got a, I got a cat on my desk. Oh, uh oh, milkshake. He's okay. blocking the notes. So 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 this this then you know is an opportunity for the thin blue line, Philadelphia's finest. Yeah, the best mm. the best boys. Yeah, mm. uh, uh, with their bicycles. Fresh off, fresh off being, inactive riot police. Fresh off being oh. screamed at. Philadelphia detective Fra- Frank Gayer raced <laughs> home <laughs> to Toronto. The second of three right. brothers. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but he had already left Toronto. But he found the remains of two of the kids on a home on St. Vincent Street, and the third, he tracked that one down to uh, Indianapolis and found uh, I think it was remnants of bone and teeth in the chimney. I mean, shit, um, not, oh, not relatively do... competent police work. Yeah, I was gonna yeah. say not to do too too much true crime here, but that is actual like cop stuff he's doing, yeah. right? That's that's not bad. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, detectives are uh, pretty good uh, sometimes. Sometimes, not all the time. Ugh. Yeah, if you, if you if your job description is more than just beating up black people, you know, mm. I mean, that's <laughs> it's one of those things that like people who want to defund or like abolish the police want to do is like separate out stuff. Like you need some investigatory function, if only so you can catch Mister Chloroform Ragman here. Like in Scotland, the Procurator Fiscal. Yeah. Hey. Which works really well. <laughs> the only police who have ever helped me out are detectives. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, now, simultaneously, the Pinkerton National Detective oh, Agency. No. Oh, no. This is the alternative. This is the alternative. You don't, you don't like you don't like a, a public police force. Bad news. The best alternative we can do is a private police force. <laughs> we we never sleep. <laughs> <laughs> they were also looking for homes because Texans don't take horse theft lightly. <laughs> oh, that's, that's sort of Al Capone on tax evasion. You know, the IRS really wants you to pay your taxes, and Texas really wants you to pay for your horses. Yes. So. 
He was arrested in Boston on November 17th, 1894. And he was like, okay, I have two options. He's like trying to figure out what, which of the many crimes they've arrested him for. And like a guy in a big Stetson walks in. He's like, horses. It's the horse thing. Gotcha. Yeah, the horses. <laughs> yeah. He's like, do I go to Philadelphia and stand trial for insurance fraud? Or do I go to Texas and get executed for horse theft? <laughs> 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 they were very strict on that sort of thing back then <laughs> don't touch the horses mm. whereas so, insurance uh, fraud is kind of victimless crime you know then and yeah now. this is true yeah ex except for the part where he murdered a guy well <laughs> oh, whatever <laughs> near, the near the victim of splitting crime. hairs yeah. come on <laughs> You know, so I, he was like, very indignant in the comments. He's like, actually, my dad is an insurance adjustment. Shut the hell up. He's, the, here's actually, the thing. He's, my he's, dad is a horse thief. <laughs> <laughs> here's the thing. He's it's a respectable he, job in my country. He's not being charged with murder yet, right? Mm -hmm. So he's just got to like brazen out the insurance theft thing without anyone yeah. finding out about any of the dead bodies. And he's good, right? Yeah. So he has the option of being extradited to Philadelphia, which he takes, right? Not knowing that Detective Frank Geyer had already discovered the murders. Ah, uh, <laughs> we'll get you, motherfucker! <laughs> yeah. yeah, go birds! We'll get you, yeah. bitch! <laughs> <laughs> so, and and of course, word came from uh, what's his name? That the handsome uh, bandit, Marion. Uh, yeah, Marion. Yeah, Marion. Yeah, Marion. That this was definitely a a fraud situation. Quickly found himself facing a murder charge in October. He was sentenced to hang at Moya Mensing Prison, October 1894. Haunted, and also now an Acme. Or, actually, no, it must be 1895. Um, never mind. Mm. Yeah, we gotta yeah. talk about we gotta talk about the press though. Cause yes, the damned yellow press. I, I put in a couple of things here, which will I think help to explain why Holmes immediately, as soon as they charged him with murder, started confessing. He confessed to different things to different people at different times. He told yes. a lot of like contradictory lies about everything that he'd done. He um, confessed to murdering people who were like obviously alive. <laughs> <laughs> and part of the reason for this is the kind of headlines that we have here. This is from a Hearst paper. I don't remember which one. And they they had to they had to struggle to pick between four headlines, so they ran all of them at once. Um, yes. <laughs> so headline number one: Holmes confesses twenty-seven murders. Number two, the most awful story of modern times told by the fiend in human shape. Uh, number yeah. three, every detail of his fearful crimes told by the man who admits he is turning into the shape of the devil. Wait, what? what? <laughs> that, that's he admitted a... it. <laughs> and, and, and Even number for four, yellow journalism, that's a little much. And number four, the tale of the greatest criminal in history. I just want to say, I just want to say, this font fucks. Oh, it's yes. great. Yes. This is Very a great good. font. Yeah. Excellent work. <laughs> Go and try and like. Just ever so slight serif thing. Very nice. Yeah. Need to try and like and the, imitate the, the that angles. Font. Yeah. 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 Let's, let's bring this back. F font makers, <laughs> make it happen. Bring this back. Yes. Um, yes. That'd be, uh, that'd be, uh, I forget what the word is if you, uh, if you make fonts. There's a cool font word maker. for it. No. It's a, you, you, you're just a photographer. You're a no, printer, you're, you're, aren't you? You're just a printer. No, sure. no, no. It ends in Smith. I want to say, huh? Typesmith, yeah. a wordsmith. It's not a wordsmith. I know that. Uh, Lithosmith. I don't know. Mm. Mm. If you, if I do you know one, if you know that, one. then I know, I know a yeah, couple. Yeah. Right, right yeah. in the yeah. comments. If, if you know, if you know a wor cool word for the guy who makes fonts, if you are that guy, <laughs> make this. You font. are that guy. Yes, make this font. <laughs> yes, send us whichever this one is. I yeah. want it a lot. Yes. So Holmes decides to ham it the fuck up after he was convicted. <laughs> right. So, you know, he confessed 27 murders, including murdering people who were confirmed to be alive as well. Uh, the Hearst company paid him $7,500 while he was on. Oh, the Hearst. So I thought you said Hearst. I was like, that's confusing. Uh, uh, well, I mean, he was company. giving them a lot of what business. What a deal. Yeah, he was also like, taking yeah, a lot of business. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, they gave him seventy five hundred dollars when he was on death row uh, for the confession. <laughs> what story. an endorsement deal! Yeah, nice. Which was almost entirely fabricated. Uh, the stories of the murder castle originate from both the confession and just outright lies from the press, including this 
this this highly implausible diagram from uh, the world on August eleventh, eighteen ninety five. I've, I've, Showing... just been, I've just been working this out. They paid him about two hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars for this. I wonder story. why he would construct all those stories. There what was would just you do so with much money back then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to spend it on? They're going to hang you. What? I mean, yeah. Uh, better news. It went into, uh, it went into his needed. old-timey suitcase that he'd yeah. been dragging around the whole time. <laughs> Uh, showing this sort of frankly impossible floor plan, like all these rooms are so tiny, you couldn't do anything in there. I mean, you need you need space to murder people. No. Um, it's not really, like basic ergonomics. You need room to swing an axe or like a mm -hmm. chloroform rag or whatever. You need oh, to be sure. able to trick people into a hotel room that's large enough that they want to stay there before they you gas mm -hmm. them. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, well, um, here's your closet. Get in. Yeah, you want you want to go in there? No, that's okay, travel yeah. lodge. <laughs> <laughs> it's never definitively concluded how many people he murdered, but again, I, I'm referencing Adam Seltzer here. He puts it at probably nine people total, right? And like, and not not in a spree, not ostensibly for like uh, like depraved reasons mm. other than money. Yeah. No, it was just like also the uh, this. Yeah, this true. guy he was, loved killing kids. Yeah, he, he did love killing <laughs> he did kids for the love of the game. At some point, <laughs> mostly he killed people who were inconvenient to him, um, and also their kids. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Jeez. Anyway, the press handed up to he systematic systemically killed over two hundred people, and <laughs> all two hundred all two hundred of those people were young women who Holmes had taken out life insurance policies on. It's okay. Very, it's, very, it's very lurid, isn't it? Like, yes. Uh, yeah, very... Uh, That's a good know. job we don't do that nowadays. It's oh, a good job there is an entire yeah. genre of podcasts based Sexy murders, yes! Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and there's sort of similar stories about he sold the cadavers to medical schools or skeletons uh, to the medical schools because he... Tribute to his early work. Scraped all the flesh off, you know? I mean, you know, that, this is also probably fake. Uh, you know, if Holmes just murdered anyone who was made his life more difficult. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, that's how the press used to work even more than it does now, right? And it's weird because yes. there's, it's not like there's a shortage of like grisly details in the real world. But, you know, if you don't have them for the thing that you're, you're being told to write, you supply them. And so... Yeah, why not? But, but also you got paid a lot more for it back then. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You, you, you got a lot more like purchasing $1, power, but it was worth like fifty thousand dollars. Yes, <laughs> Genu um, genuinely thirty-five times as much uh, uh, as much purchasing power at that point. Yeah. Wow. And so, anyway, you know, major press sen sensation doesn't help him out. Uh, he was hanged here at the South Philly Acme. <laughs> on May 7th. Yeah. That's where they got the rope from. Yeah, no, it's, it's it's a grim sight from the gallows, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I've bought beer here. <laughs> and food. <laughs> he was hanged here at the South Philly Acme on May 7th, 1896. That's what he gets for wearing a Cowboys jersey to court. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Cowboys jersey is how Joy I said that. Joyzy. 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 Yeah. Got my cowboy Joyzy. <laughs> ah, see? That's how, that's how Marion talked. Um, <laughs> there was the handsome, the handsome bandit, not the very well spoken bandit. True. The, uh, the quote unquote murder castle suffered a fire shortly afterwards. And a lot of sources say that destroyed it. Yeah, yeah he uh, made up the floor plan. It, it was his ghost trying to claim the insurance money. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It was actually a pretty minor fire that the building was repaired and remained in use until 1938, when it was demolished for a New Deal post office. FDR oh. just disrespecting the genre of true crime <laughs> there. <laughs> in order FDR to is it. not staying sexy. So, no. no. <laughs> so, d disrespecting the legacy of, of true crime in order to build the minimum viable American socialism. Yeah. Yeah, just, just uh, we're going to have a nice post office in Englewood. <laughs> <laughs> H. H. Holmes requested to be buried in a concrete lined coffin so as to thwart quit grave robbers. Oh, oh. Not so nice what happens to you, is it? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I was about to say. Yeah, live by the grave robbery, die by the grave robbery, as far as I'm concerned. Should be You're open dead season. perhaps by the grave robbery. He's in a, he's a in fucking elevator on the grave, so you just take him out, put him back in again. 
Uh, <laughs> he's in Holy Cross Cemetery in Yaden, which is just west of where I am. Yep. Um, but nevertheless, the uh, University of Pennsylvania Museum of Archaeology and Anthropology dug him up in 2017 to confirm that he didn't fake his own death. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he which just he didn't do he, anything. He didn't. It was definitely the guy. Apparently, remarkably well preserved. Yeah, had a still Going has to the mustache. Concrete. Still yeah, had the mustache. Still had the mustache. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's all of uh, pr- preserving oils leaching out of that. Mm. It's funny to see some some local character in this one. I will say that. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I've uh, had several days of seeing local characters. It's been yeah. great. So this is this is the story of H. H. Holmes as it actually probably happened. But it had a major effect on popular culture. Oh yeah. Right? The, the the legacy of this guy, because he's he's often described as America's first serial killer. Very often. It's, yes. yeah. it's it's debatable whether or not you can call him a serial killer within the meaning of the like the legal, the pathological meaning of the term. Um not least because he didn't like kill people in like one continuous course of conduct, and like it mostly seemed to be like based on inconvenience. Uh, but also, the reason why he gets written about so much is because he's also a fringe suspect candidate for the most depraved true crime people on earth, ripperologists. Uh, oh my, my god. god. Now, if you at some point, maybe if, since we're a true crime podcast now, we're going to have yes. to do an episode about Jack the Ripper. No, about uh, Ripperologists. Well, yes, because like as an unsolved series of horrific crimes, and nominally the world's first serial killer, it's not the case, but it did play a large part in like you know sort of normalizing it as a phenomenon that then created the next big waves of serial killers. Um, like people became obsessed with detecting the identity of Jack the Ripper. They still are. They do it in a way that's tremendously disrespectful to basically everyone involved. I highly recommend Hallie Rubenhold's book, The Five: uh, The Untold yes. Lives of the Women Killed by Jack the Ripper, uh, for some some victim centric uh, history there. Um, but so essentially, because Jack the Ripper got away with it because he was anonymous, because he was probably anonymous in life as well. Uh, people don't like that for much the same reason that they don't like believing that Lee Harvey Oswald shot JFK. They think it has to be someone important because only an important person can do important things. And so they just like name famous Victorians or Victorians they've heard of. Um, so you get like Walter Sickert or Prince Albert Victor or fucking you name it. Uh, Thomas Benjamin Disraeli. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thomas Thomas Cream is another one uh, with a prodigious mustache, another American. Um, but yeah, so uh, because he was alive at the right time, people have suggested that H. H. Holmes was Jack the Ripper. He was not. Um, however, I think it's worth talking about because it's part of a sort of like a a major problem that I have with true crime as a genre, which is that it's content to sort of like trample any sort of investigatory or empathetic instinct in the pursuit of always having to say something new so you can sell books, sell podcasts, all the rest of it. Um, also, he, he wasn't it, fucking Jack the Ripper, is what I'm he's saying. Not, he's not he fucking not. Jack the Ripper. The other thing about true crime is, you know, I always feels like, you know, I, yeah, there, there, there's a pathological thing there where it's like, I want to be murdered by this guy. Sure. You know, what if, what if I, this guy was like? What if this guy murdered in, me in like a sexy way, as opposed to yes. the repulsive way? And even when they try to make them repulsive, it just means that people think the repulsive thing is sexy, like people fucking buying uh, Jeffrey Dahmer's glasses because of the Netflix show or whatever. It just yeah. it just doesn't work. You you can't. It's very difficult to make a show or a movie or something like that about someone who is genuinely antagonistic to humanity in the way that a serial killer is. Make it from the victim's perspective. Television yes. Show. Yeah. Murder's horrible. Stop mm-hmm. glamorizing it. Television. Mm-hmm. Books. Yeah, and I, 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 and I like well, some murder fiction. You know, I, I, it's it's a guilty pleasure for me sometimes. And but I think even when you try and deconstruct it, even when you try and like do a feminist serial killer thing, like say The Fall, I think you end up, uh, well, falling into much the same the same traps, the same. Pulls. Um did, did Liam drop out? Liam. No, I'm eating. 
Okay. I oh, figured sorry. he was eating. Cause, cause I was wondering when we were going to drop in. in. Too, because yeah, okay. this is a wonderful <laughs> household. I, I was wondering when we were going to drop in with our theory that murder should be legal. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, Justin, we've already discussed this, uh, but only on the basis of automobiles. So, uh, Well, I mean, I, I, I rapidly yeah. came to develop this theory independently in uh, an Avanti West Coast quiet car that was not that quiet. <laughs> Um, from, oh, from, from from London to Glasgow, where I was sitting across from uh, two Tories who kept making Scottish jokes. So, oh, I, absolutely destroy those people! Yeah, you have I, to blow I, those people up. Yeah, I, 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 I became a Scottish nationalist first of all, and then I came to the conclusion that murder should be not just legal but required. Um, you need to turn those guys <laughs> yeah. into toothpaste. That's, uh, I, that's I, an, I will say that's an uh, honor killing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I will say. Uh, Suck that shit. I, uh, 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 crime junkie is the one. Mm. I, yeah, I mean, th- your purely anarchist theory of murder, right, is that uh, every murder is subject to a sort of popular referendum. Yeah, and if if people yeah. if yes. people don't like it, then you have a problem. But if yes, you just yes. kind of like murder someone, and everyone kind of agrees that you had a good enough reason, then it's fine. Yeah, it's um, like. If that guy had it coming, sure. <laughs> Wait, who are my actionable threats last time? I'll list, list those off on there. <laughs> because they've all changed now, because none of them can keep a... a, a yeah, like, the cabinet reshuffle, they've all yeah. jogged around, that's it. Yeah. Ridiculous. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I... This is the thing, I'm too much of a statist. I think at some point you do need big government, big mommy government, to come in and say that you can't always kill the people that you want to kill, even if they have it coming. Mm. Yeah, you probably the, shouldn't just murder people in general. Mm. Uh, it's not an especially ethical thing to do. You're not the state. You're not. Yeah. You know. And the state does a pretty poor job of it. You too. should not be. Yeah. And I'm not saying the state should be the ones murdering people. I'm saying like no one should have that power. Essentially. Yeah. Mm. Besides I'm, me, I'm, who should I'm, absolutely <laughs> have that power. I'm on the fence there. Yeah, I think I think if they put us in charge of who gets murdered. Yeah, we make some fine. pretty good I think, choices. I, I think if we're getting <laughs> into the the fifth hour of the train journey, and you're making Braveheart <laughs> jokes as we head north. Oh my god, toothpaste! Fucking turn them into toothpaste. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, what I do, mean, what, fuck, what do we what do we have to say about true crime as a genre rather than stop it? You know, stop doing it. Yeah, stop yeah, doing I mean, it. Yeah. This is our annual anti-true crime podcast podcast. <laughs> <laughs> people people won't because people enjoy like living vicariously and it makes you feel like alive uh, to it's hear like about a someone else thrill, dying. Right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And like even even like people who were like in groups targeted by the thing, like women fucking love true crime about murdered women. And it's I I don't know how to explain that phenomenon really. Um other than that, like it's, it's women be crazy. Well, well that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fuck it. Let's go with that. <laughs> All right. Here's the question. Yeah. How is our podcast different from a true crime podcast, though? Uh, we're because, making jokes. <laughs> because as, I think <laughs> I've made this that, that that exact about about joke yeah, about, about the podcast, but our, the vibe of our podcast is stay sexy and don't get social murdered, right? Like, <laughs> yes. There's, there's the, I, I feel like there's a difference between individual criminal um, malfaisons in the way that that's treated by the criminal law. And the kind of malfaisance that we deal with that is typically not um, the large sort of structural murder. Yeah, even it happens I, constantly I, around so, us. So, yeah. as a, as a mostly viewer and listener, um, like anyone who actually isn't a moron who's listening to the show understands that actually you, through gallows humor, you're treating all the victims of the disasters, but systematic engineering or other. You're treating them with actual great care because the whole point is that you're pointing out through a, a through an accessible format of humor that these people have been let down. Uh, so I don't think it's glamorizing it the way that true crime is like. Look at these sexy murders. Mm. I, yeah, I, I, no, I, you're all off the hook. It's fine. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Okay, thank you, Gareth. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Gareth, for being the conscience of the podcast. Uh, yes. Well, we have a segment on this podcast called. Safety third. Shake hands with danger. 
Oh, I don't like this image or any of Oh, why is this here? I have uh, no thank you. No th Hello. <laughs> <laughs> just, just I, this is just remind. I've just ruined it. Sorry, no, I've just been reminded of when we were on a train and there was an advert for uh, willing participants in a pain experiment. Yes, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good. I to the point where I'm going to look. I took a picture of it. I'm going to look it up so I can read it out verbatim. It's pretty, pretty good. Hmm. Um, yeah, I, did, I, I didn't I, know they were advertising for my electrolysis sessions. <laughs> oh no! Oh. Hello. I'll come in. I'll jump in yeah. later. <laughs> Hello to Alice and Justin. Yay to Liam, and welcome to any guests. Yeah, I'm hey, here. Nailed, I'm it, nailed it this time, you know. Yes, faultless. I worked in a pain research lab. Oh, oh shit! Where Ooh. safety was the third priority, Ooh. following publishing papers and cutting costs. Uh, surely fourth, because causing pain had to be in there, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In the years before I started, the machine which induces pain, one that had been regulated as a medical device and research device, broke down and was re replaced with a much cheaper, uncertified device. Jesus, yeah. what? Yeah, a hammer. <laughs> what is, I, 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 here's the thing, right? I, 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 don't, I don't want to know this. But I feel obliged to ask, what does a like a regulated pain causing device look like? And please don't say a hammer with an accelerometer attached to it. <laughs> <laughs> it's attached oh, to a torque wrench. <laughs> well, if, if, if the picture from the advert is anything to be judged by, it looks kind of like a, a VR headset. What? Uh, Fuck yeah. that. No, thank you. Participants needed for pain research. That was the advert. Well, my eyes involved in this funny. this situation. Yeah, they jab your eyes. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Re <laughs> research was unable to proceed, as the research protocols had to be translated to the new machine, which also had to be interfaced with the MRI machine. What the, I don't know. No, mm -hmm. listen. I, first of all, you got to be hooked up to the pain machine, the unauthorized pain machine. Second of all, third of all, you've got to be in a fucking MRI, the thing that's already terrifying, even when you're not hooked up to a pain machine. This is some Final Destination shit right here. So I, the I, synchronous... I'm like two breaths away from a panic attack hearing about this shit. What the Jesus fuck? Christ. The new machine, which had to be interfaced with the MRI machine so that synchronous brain images could be taken alongside the application is, of pain. Is, is that not a <laughs> significant confounding factor, the fact that we've put you inside the claustrophobia washing machine while we're applying <laughs> the pain to you? Oh my god. I, I had an MRI once and it was fine, but I was not hooked up to a pain machine. <laughs> I, I've, I, I've had an MRI before once as a very young kid. I didn't like it at all. I think it probably would have significantly lowered my pain tolerance. Um, I, I've I've only ever been hooked up to a pain machine in a purely recreational setting, and, it was, <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and you had safe words. Mm -hmm. Well, exactly. I, I'm going to say, trust me, that those pain machines were thoroughly regulated. It will be not as medical or research devices. There was some like <laughs> some oversight going on there. There were systems in place, right? And D I, d d Checks just and balances. Like, yeah, exactly, exactly. And just like, oh yeah, we got this thing. We're pretty certain it hurts. Getting the MRI. Yeah. The <laughs> <laughs> Setting up fun with mice. <laughs> Setting up the system and interfacing the timing signals was my job. Jesus. I have an at attached an MS paint drawing of the area of the hospital where the following events occurred. It's not oh, a helpful gosh. diagram. You see, there's, 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 there's a room here where the MRI is. Mm -hmm. There is the pain machine control down here. There's other rooms over here. Ah, this makes more sense. Right. I yeah. thought it was a diagram of pulley systems. Yes. And then there's uh, a window to the MRI over here, right? Okay. Um, now, this green area is where you aren't affected by the magnet. Uh, but you can't see the window from the pain machine control. That seems oh, like a serious yeah. oversight. Oh. Yeah. Just put in another window. Yes. 
This involved plenty of sketchy things, including having to work with tools I brought from home, which were absolutely magnetic, (laughs) so I had to carefully make my way around the edge of the MRI room to a panel at the back. Ooh, fuck right, that. I cut Have you ever seen a video of an MRI grab something? Yeah, oh, that's pretty funny. This is one of like about seven thousand reasons why I'm terrified of an MRI. Is you know, despite knowing that I I, I won't have anything metal on me if I go in there because they check, yeah. and despite knowing what that, what if I, you forget? <laughs> what, what if? What if? What if my dentist has like yeah. fucked up right somehow and left a little bit of metal in there or something? And the first thing I know about it is I am being flung across the room onto the electromagnet. You know? What if that? <laughs> Answer me in the comments. What if that? What if yeah, that? I have, a, I have a metal cap. That means I must not be able to get an MRI because it will go straight through my fucking brain. <laughs> I don't like this. I, this is my least favorite safety third. I, I am no, not happy. No, I'm, so I had to mm-hmm. carefully make my way around the edge of the MRI room to a panel at the back where I could cut holes for cable runs. What cutting hole? Uh, oh no. boy, he's doing yeah. some light cutting. Because if <laughs> another thing, another thing about MRIs, if you're not familiar, is that the magnetic field, right? The, the magnet itself, you can't turn that off. It's not energized in any way. It's just inherent to the thing. So, like, it while it's installed, it doesn't matter. You can't cut power to it. There's the zone where if you enter that zone, you're going to get attached to the fucking magnet. And that, it, well, well, you you can cut power to it. It just means you can't use the MRI again. Mm. They're uh, very seems... expensive machines. Yeah. Also, <laughs> my 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 other favorite MRI fact is that they're called using helium. Um, yes. Which is you know not what you would call a commonplace chemical, perversely. One that we have a very finite supply of on Earth, and one that is also used for making your voice go funny and refueling balloons. Yeah, mm. blimps. Back to the blimp episode. Yes. My, 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 high school, uh, my high school physics teacher relayed an anecdote to me once that was uh, about like, yeah, you know, you can do all kinds of these fun stuff with liquid nitrogen. You dip your finger in it, you can do uh, uh, you know, all that stuff with it. Liquid helium, though, you can't fuck around with. It's too cold. <laughs> it does other things. <laughs> look, look into the U.S. Uh, strategic <laughs> strategic helium reserve. Yes, uh, yes. It's it's not as big as you think it is. No. Yeah. Our first test of this resulted in our cables acting as an antenna for local radio broadcasts. Which ruined the MRI images. <laughs> you, you're in the MRI. You're getting fucking hit with the pain machine, and all they're getting on the screens is like the waveform of like you're listening to ninety-seven point nine with <laughs> the <laughs> gosh. <laughs> yeah, the fucking the fu- it's 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 gonna be like fucking uh fu- fucking uh Rush Limbaugh. You know that. <laughs> oh my god. I installed hand soldered. And soldered filters into this multi-million dollar MRI machine and our discount pain-inducing machine. I as far really as I am hate aware, the phrase discount, discount pain-inducing pain machine. machine. <laughs> yeah, me too. Oh. As far as I'm aware, this equipment is still operating within my design spec. Uh, well, this brings us to, capital T, the incident. Uh, and we haven't got to the, None of what we've heard is the incident yet? That's just all <laughs> preamble, you know? I am, a colleague, my heart rate is elevated. A colleague and I were performing some last checks, and I wanted to test the device at its highest power to see if it caused interference or artifacts, given that it had not passed the ordinary set of regulatory tests. Uh-huh. We also needed to test it. We also needed to test it on a live person. Oh, oh no. no, that's not a sentence that should be written down. No, thank you. These tests could not be run at the same time as the power test would be run at a pain-inducing temperature 10 degrees Celsius higher than the highest pain tolerance threshold measured in any experimental subject. Right. <laughs> Wait, so the pain, it, this pain device is a toaster? Wait, no, uh, hold on a second. I'm, I'm putting, I'm, I'm rotating this shit in my mind. If you're, if you're measuring temperature there, I have a nasty feeling that what you're doing is literally electrolysis. That what you're doing is literally yeah. putting uh, radio waves into the fucking person until it raises the skin temperature. This I, is like uh, this has got to be like the same thing as like you know that that thing they have for dispersing crowds now, where it like just oh, the LRAD thing. Yeah, yeah, it must be the same thing. Not turn your insides into gloop. Yep. Mm. Mm. 
I thought it did. I only doing it for a short period of time. Yeah, no, I, I've calmed myself down here. This is just a bit. This is an overgrown electrolysis machine. I get one of those every like two weeks. Um, okay. I, I would, I wouldn't like having it at an MRI, and nope. it hurts. But okay, that's a, okay. reasonable. Okay. After running the power test, a man I had never seen before, wearing a oh. medical gown, poked his head into the monitoring room where I was working and said, "Wow, you really hurt people with that thing." Yeah, that was a centibite. Yes. <laughs> Again, sentences I don't like the sound of. A man I, I had never seen before wearing a medical gag. <laughs> oh, fetish play. Yes, let's do this now. <laughs> My colleague had procured a volunteer who had the misfortune to be working nearby in the hospital so we could run when, the test simultaneously and when, save time. When you say procured. How, how's that procurement happening? <laughs> hey, do you want to try? Yeah. Do you want to test the like highest level of our unlicensed pain <laughs> machine? Listen, <laughs> listen, 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 listen you're going to experience some pain. Question is whether you want it to last. Come with me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this, this is horrible. Fortunately, he was a good sport about being subject to a level of pain equivalent to the record set by us fucking around while drinking whiskey after hours and did not report us. There's a uh, record? What? There's a, like a leaderboard? Oh, I, boy. I thought I was a master. <laughs> I, I like, I like the idea of these guys just, just, just <laughs> hanging around, around after saying, hours. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I would do that too. I know myself. It's like pretty <laughs> college. I couldn't get enough of the hand torturing device. <laughs> just put my hand in the thing like, ow. <laughs> hey, you want to know what a hand job from a golem feels like? <laughs> it's like two assholes getting drunk. They like put each, they like put their hands in the Go thing occasionally. The other one calls them a pussy. Yeah, <laughs> this goes on for like three hours. It's the opposite of the uh, the, the 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 ladies from Dune. It's just like we're trying to make the world's. The, the universe is supreme redneck. <laughs> the, thing, the thing about science, right, and the scientific method is that it's fucked, because there's more than enough pain in the world already. Anyone will tell you this. And yet, in order to test it empirically, someone decided that the dictates of this model require that they build a pain machine. So they could pain people up objectively enough. Instead of just taking like any of the existing pain and seeing if it worked on that, they're like, no, we gotta have the hammer. We gotta do it this way. <laughs> Doctors say that chronic pain isn't real, so you can't you can't use those oh people. They're, God, they're pretending. So, yeah. I left the job certainly shortly after this incident for a number of reasons, and not being liable for a preventable workplace accident was on that list. What okay. I will never again work in a heavily scrutinized and controversial area of research involving inflicting intentional harm with unlicensed equipment and a bunch of hooligan students, and I strongly recommend to all the listeners that they also not do that. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Uh, I'm, Wait, I'm I, I feel like the incident has happened, and everyone was complicit in this incident. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. You just grabbed a guy from work and you just put him in the pain machine. Well, you want to go in the pain machine? <laughs> Now, in fairness, in a, in, a, in a college environment, I could 100% see getting an actual volunteer for that. It's the same people who yeah. eat, like, you know, hot chilies or whatever. Uh, to be, mm -hmm. I, used to, I, I used to, uh, to be fair, as a student, I was being paid for a fiver or a tenner to do psychological, had psychological experiments done on me. Oh, yeah, and the, the, when, you, when you turn into the Unabomber in, like, 25 years, then... Oh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, yeah I, we'll, I, be, uh, we'll be your character witnesses, don't worry. I, I, yeah. I, was, I was about to do a joke that was like, yeah, I'm never going to work in a heavily scrutinized controversial area of research again. I'm gonna go somewhere where I can like inflict really lasting pain with no one scrutinizing me, a university psychology department. Yes, that's <laughs> exactly it. Uh, but you know, uh, being a student in the UK, I need to eat. Mm. Yeah. I, I did not like this safety third at all. I mean, no. okay, the person who did it, fine, it was funny, but I, I did not. I've listened to every single safety third, and I do not like this. I've I've all. I've become more scared of MRIs after this. Oh, for sure. 
I thought it was really funny. I was thought it? this was one of the funniest <laughs> yeah, ones I bet, <laughs> I bet you did. I really enjoyed this one. <laughs> <laughs> you freak. Oh, my God. Oh, Jesus. I, th- I think I have a clear, a clear division of labor on this podcast between which of us would volunteer for the pain machine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what are you going to do? Oh, my God. And I surprised myself. You know, I, I-, I blinked first. Uh, <laughs> Look, no, no lasting harm, no foul. Anyway. <laughs> that was Safety Third. Shake hands with danger. Our next episode is on the Boston Molasses Disaster. Does anyone have any commercials before we go? Go follow uh, Gareth on Twitter. Go yeah. watch Rail Yeah, uh, Yeah, listen to 10,000 uh, losses. Listen to Trash Future. Listen to Lions Led by Donkeys. Uh, yeah, uh, subscribe Bond. to the Patreon and let us to the bonus yeah. episodes as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yes. if the people want more Gareth, where can they find more Gareth? Uh, good God, on Twitter, where uh, I uh do not at shut the up. moment in Philadelphia. Yeah, that's true. I'm in <laughs> Philadelphia. You can come find me for a diminishing number of hours. You're probably <laughs> negative hours by the time this goes out. True. Yeah, I've left. I've gone. I'm, I'm probably back in the UK having flown over the Atlantic again. Yes. Well, what is the light? Yes. <laughs> All right. Good night, yes. everybody. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> bye. Bye, everyone. Thanks for editing this one together, Devin. It's my first Devin edited episode. Thank you, Devin. <laughs>